But an excellent coach in Morgan Reeser, I think, uh, Jenny, with, uh, with Platoon. You know Morgan quite well. Yeah, he, he's fabulous. I mean, talk about keeping them on an even keel, probably. I'm sure Harp does blow up on the boat, and I'm sure he, he blows up with the team at points. He doesn't do it to us, to, to the media necessarily, but Morgan is just, he's the most Kiwi of Americans. You know, he's the, um, he's got that calm, cool, collected, no matter how a team is doing. And he says that with his Olympic teams, when they're, when they're doing really well, he kind of grounds them and centers them and reminds them there's still more racing to go. And I think with platoon, it's all he could do to um, try to keep them on the rails at the last regatta on that final day. And, um, and it's hard when you're off the boat, you know, you can't help in the decision making in the pre starts. And uh, we didn't really see them from outside why platoon was getting so involved with other boats in the pre starts in both of those races. But, um, but yeah, he, he does just calm them down just enough. And he's obviously clearly great at the at the technicals and the weather as well, the stuff that you want and need and all the coaches out here, they're, yeah, they're all the spectacular coaching. what they're doing. And correspondingly, Rod Davis with, uh, with SLED, supremely experienced yeah. and uh, it's a testament to his uh, commitment and talent that uh, SLED are where they are just now, I think. He's been round the block a few times as Rod. <laughs> he has, he's that same Emirates Team New Zealand blood that so much of the uh, sled team comes from and yeah. and the same I mean I'm sure he's got the he doesn't sugarcoat it to. no exactly which is what they want you know they want to know where the uh, where the improvements come there's there'd be nothing worse than coming ashore after a bad day and not being told uh, what you've done wrong this could be the final jibe of the uh, the season for for sled here if they're on lay. But a big, and once again, 100, 130 metres ahead of uh, Quantum Racing. Yeah, in, incredible, incredible lead over like, the whole fleet. They've just, they've just taken the conditions here perfectly. Just that as well, such a beautiful jive. I mean, two seconds later or 10 seconds later, Brennanisek went for their jive and it just took them you know, five seconds longer to get the kite uh, filled and flying afterwards. And, and sleds was just gorgeous, well-timed, well-executed, well-driven to the kite trim, just like Quantum actually here. I mean, that's a, that's a beautiful drive from, from Quantum Racing, but it reminds you of the teams that are really, really sharp at the front end when they make it look so easy. At the moment, we've got Quantum second and uh, Platoon in eighth. I think that will uh, close up after this jive, perhaps, but... Uh, yeah, I think on the water, Platoon's sitting fifth, so yeah, that yeah, might just be yeah. a little uh, quick glitch in the system. But yeah, we have uh, Platoon just has just jived with Azura behind them, jiving now. Yeah, Azura we certainly see sixth. them on virtual now, but... Uh... So Quantum not quite doing enough just to skip over the top of Platoon for the overalls and probably not just enough to get past them for this regatta either. It's still nice to be so tight at the end, and yeah, yeah. I'm sure... Ed Reynolds and the entire Quantum family will be still happy to close out the podium if not being in the position they were last year, but still having their two boats at the uh, at the top of the pyramid. That's right. Two Quantum boats, uh, second and third of the season. But that, uh, that picture tells a story, isn't it? Sled out on their own, no one... Uh, in the same shot. Yeah, the same picture we've seen five times in a row. Uh, just running away. I think you know, the last race, Quantum got quite close to them in the uh, in the or the first race, Quantum got quite close to them. Allegro were fairly near them, but this is this is running away. Whenever you're winning a race by 130 meters in this fleet, you're doing something special. You're definitely doing something right. Um, it's very hard. You 130 metres doesn't seem like a lot, but when you look at it, two boats side by side, it's uh, <coughs> one in front of the other, it really is a distance. Yeah, you know, you'd, you'd think of Sled, Azura have won the, the title, Far, uh, brilliant, but the masterclass that Sled have put on here, people have got to be thinking about in South Africa, that yeah. they are the new boat to beat, not just for the after a regatta like this, especially in the breeze. But equally, 
you know, Sled can't afford a moment of complacency. You know, this has been a specific set of conditions almost in a very specific flat water race arena that uh, everybody knows very, very well. In South Africa, it'll be all new in terms of, you know, Grand Prix monohull racing on a course that uh, not too many guys will know. Maybe some uh, advantage to the locals. Yeah, I think a lot of the guys, some of the the, the locals on Phoenix, say the, uh, the the Cape 31s yeah. down in said in South Africa, they know the conditions, they know the waves, they know how to drive through them. I think the the upwind and some of that South Atlantic swell <laughs> and is going to be is going to be a. Uh, it's quite right for us because it's going to be like the Solent, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> a big test the for way. the teams and uh, pretty physical stuff. In the gym through the winter, Fergal. Yeah, me not so much. <laughs> Drone shots like that just showcase what beautiful sailing we, we get to we get to no, live completely. with. There's a certain grace, isn't there, about these boats? We've seen that particularly with these fantastic drone, drone images that we've had here, and uh, I think particularly also in Cascais. And I think this is what shows the continued appeal of uh, Grand Prix monohull racing. Foiling events are fabulous. There's a certain beauty in this that I don't think you could say the uh, you'll see in the, the in the America's Cup. You see, so they're they're just they're they're pretty they're in almost in cruise mode now. You know, they're, I think they I think they're in for the finish here. They're not. I don't think they've got many any jibes left in them. Maybe one just to dip the line, but they're kind of just looking at the committee boat. Just making what, sure a, what a fabulous collapse. backdrop as well there, Fergal. That is uh, Sardinia Costa Smeralda in a picture postcard. Yeah, it's what we come here for, these conditions. these. Uh, it's a shame we had to lose a couple of days, but we still got nine races in. We got a full full championship over three days with three races. And uh, yeah, it's very exactly very quickly then credit to the uh, to Maria Torrijo and the, uh, the race team. They've worked incredibly hard through the season. And, it, and indeed the uh, Yacht Club Costa Smeralda race team here, they are the benchmark, I think, in terms of uh, race management. As indeed here we have the uh, benchmark at this regatta, bow number five, Sled, Jenny, coming through for their fifth win. Five in a row, bow number five. Uh, I mean, it's just spectacular, isn't it? Five, five races in a row with such commanding um, presence and a second just before that yesterday, so two, one, one. One, 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 and I just think that is that is a dream for all the guys on board as they're crossing the line from from bow back. We can I'm gonna I'm gonna just destroy some of the Japanese names and apologizing in advance. But Jeremy Lomas, Andrew McCordale, Nora Igi, Ryan Godfrey, Derek Seward, Robbie Naismith, Christian Comp, Don Cowie, Hideki Wakayama, Tony Ray, Andrea Vicentini, Murray Jones, Adam Bichel, and Mr. Takahashi Akura. Such a phenomenal regatta they put on. I mean, just a true master class. And I think, as you said, they might not even be on the podium for this series, but they are almost marking themselves as the team to beat for next year. And and so well done to the sled team. Quantum Meanwhile, racing. behind them there, Quantum Racing just crossing the line. And the question is, is it enough that they've done with the six points that they need with Azura out the back? And I think Azura is just only going to be four points. Um, four points behind them. So I think that'll be Quantum Racing sitting third um, on the podium here and on the series overall. And um, yeah, a disappointment for that team, but still a, a really, really exceptional Phoenix um, getting job third. in general. Phoenix coming across the line in third, just pipped Brennanisek. Brennanisek not really able to pull off the jibes on this downwind, so two or three times we saw them, their kite just collapsed as they bore away into the jibe. They, they haven't really nailed the, the teamwork maneuvering that the rest of the team has done in this breeze. So I think um, Phoenix, actually, Tony Norris looked like he was driving through the jibes like a champ, so um, just just the blue boat dropping back into fourth position and the South Africans putting themselves on a podium uh, finish for this race just before they're then going to send the whole fleet to South Africa. Meanwhile, out the back here, platoon. Now a disappointment for that team not having been able to um, 
take the overall series win from Missouri, but actually not really needing to drive there, but going for it anyway, um, going for this fifth position across the line. And I think, um, as we said, hard roller spear, he won't tell us on shore, but he's probably going to be a touch disappointed that they are um, second overall for the series. And um, uh, they're going to be, I think, fourth overall here with um, Quantum Racing and Azura in front of them on the podium. Azura just crossing the line there, getting all the honks of the um, of the committee boat and of the uh, super yacht outside of them. And then at Allegre and maybe what's going to be a tight battle for Gladiator and Provetsa here. Gladiator just coming out of their jive, um, heating up. We're actually not on the line anymore, but I think that might go to Gladiator bearing away really hard right at the finish there. I don't know if you guys saw it. Um, better than we did, but it looked like red kite over red bow. Um, so well done to them just playing hard all the way into the end. And then Team Vision Future uh, bringing up the rear. But at points, they did have um, some excellent places and some um, good showings, Andy, throughout the rest of the regatta. Indeed. Uh, but uh, our focus just now is on the Azura. Emblematic team racing uh, on home waters, a proud heritage going back to the uh, 12 meter days in the America's Cup. The, the uh, team will motor back in past the uh, 12 meter Azura, knowing that they've made a little bit of uh, a little more history added to the uh, Azura legacy. And they will be leading the party tonight, absolutely 100%. KG Parada, 52 or not, they'll be parting like a 16 year old. And a great, a great way for, <laughs> for Santi to, to finish his, yeah. uh, his tenure with Azura, to go out with a, a season win and uh, a, 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 brilliant, a brilliant season. And I think there were three birthdays on there this week. And incredibly, so Gij 52 today, Santi was 58 last week, uh, Manu on the bow, 51. Uh, these guys still Boring at 50s. the very, very, very top of their game, uh, fit as fiddles and able to pull off season wins against you know, the best in the world. So. Let's have a look back uh, to that uh, race, the final race uh, of 2019 in the 52 Super Series. So the final race of 2019, the 52 Super Series. Sled certainly earning that number on the bow of the boat. Five wins today and we go down onto the start. Very, very easy, even start between all the boats. Great sight as you look up from the pin end of the line. Provetsa right at the pin, and as you can see, bow five pushing out. A nice onboard shot of platoon there, hiking hard. As Han Molishpur and his team made his way up the first beat, but quite fittingly, you can see again, bow five starting to edge out into the, the first beat. You can see Provetsa closest to us there. We're actually starting to tie neck and neck with Sled. We jump back on board with platoon, and you can see the whole fleet stacked up to lure it of her, Azura just underneath her as well, keeping tabs. But as we made our way up to the top of that first beat, it was bow five sled around with a nice little gap back to Brennanisek. It was Brennanisek around in second, and then Quantum chasing her quite closely and Prevetsa there as well. Azura putting the charge on Prevetsa and rolling over the top. They got locked in a nice little battle on this downwind leg. And we go to the graphic, you can see Sled now starting to create a lot of space around her, getting into her own patch of water and quite simply extending that lead, which we've seen them do all day long. Down to the bottom mark for the first time, it was Sled with the nice drop as they took the right left-hand gate, sorry, and coming up onto the win, you can see Brennanisek and Quantum splitting gates. Very, very close battle between those two. And Platoon coming around as well. I'm just going to slow it down just in behind Platoon. You can see as we get the camera on it, a big fishing net for Prevetsa, unfortunately. Getting caught up with Brennanisek on that jibe and dropping their kite in the water. And really putting them out of the contention in this race. On the final upwind beat, it was all sled out in front, bow number five as we've seen all day, five wins. And then back down to Quantum in a nice little battle actually with the rest of the fleet behind it. It was a very, very tight battle. Quantum had a bit of a task on their hand trying to defend that second position from boats either side, Phoenix and Brennanisek. 
But as we came up to the top mark, it was all sled from the top. You can see Brennanisek just in behind her, cracking the sheets and away they go to the stretch mark, getting ready to hoist the spinnakers. And then as we get to the top mark, Quantum slipping inside of Brennanisek at the last moment. Phoenix just in behind Brennanisek. And as you can see, the top four boats Phoenix, Brennanisek, Quantum, and then out on the lead again, Sled. As Fogel said, their final jive sled for the season as they picked their ley line beautifully. A fantastic drone shot of Sled as they made their way down to the finish for their last time here in Porto Cervo. Bit of a fist pump there on board. Absolutely ecstatic with their performance today. Five wins in a row. Incredible performance from that crew. Quantum coming through and taking second. Great race from Doug DeVos and the team and a very good finish to the regatta and the season for Phoenix taking third position, just beating Brennanisek across the line. But it was all about this team here, Azura taking the 2019 series title in front of their home yacht club. Fantastic performance from that team and a well-earned victory, Andy. The home uh, yacht club, the uh, blue, uh, emblematic blue of Azura, well to the fore uh, and uh, we're just waiting for uh, Jenny. Jenny's on board with the uh, the winning team. The uh, three second places uh, this season in uh, Porto Sherry, Cascais and Porto Portales, 1 point, 1 point, 2 points, but they have won the uh, season by 12 points. Jenny Tullock, what a, what a fantastic result for the birthday boy. They have won this season by 12 points and um, bon compleanno tanti auguri to the birthday <laughs> board. 52nd birthday um, winning the 52 Super Series in your home waters. How does it feel? Uh, for sure it's a day that we've been waiting for a long time this season. We started working very early last winter when we when we finished third in the, in the season. We, we said to ourselves that we we need to do better this year so we went through a lot of changes in the boat and we took a couple of risks, but luckily they, they work it out well and now we are celebrating. So it's a good time. <laughs> I mean, I think this, this question has to be asked. The consistency of the team to never have won a regatta here, to always be the bridesmaid. In fact, I think there's five other teams with more wins for you guys. But you take the overall series. You'd take that over any three regatta wins, wouldn't you? Yeah, for sure. We, we, we were second in the last four events, so that's that's been in something we we were very close to winning in the in the previous three. This time, Sled had a magic magic week for sure, so they were untouchable. But but we we knew that were they were not playing for the overall, so we didn't keep we didn't keep an eye on them a lot. But but obviously, being second in four events gave us the the, the possibility to. To be where we are now, I think that that that's that was Santi's style from the beginning, trying to avoid high risks and be position ourselves in in good spots together with Cole. So, so I think at at the end it was okay. Look at look at that beauty. <laughs> oh man, I miss that spectacular rub. Love it. The Italian Argentinian team, an Italian Argentinian tactician. It took maybe a year, a series, to get used to having Santi on board instead of Vasco. But now it just goes a testament to yourself and the team, and then having Santi slap in to to win so convincingly as well. A race to go. Yeah, I, I think it was a long time that Santi didn't didn't race in fleet racing with this kind of monohull. So it, it took him a little while to to get used to what the fleet is. For sure, we know he's a fantastic sailor and that, that's why we bet on, on having him. And as I always say, whenever you have a bad day, it's better to have, have it with a friend. And whenever it's time to celebrate, it's a lot better to celebrate with friends. So we are both Argentinians, by the way, not Italian and Argentinians. <laughs> um, second question next year, well, not second, but the, the question about Santi, he is leaving you guys next year to go back towards the Olympic sailing can you spill at all who you're thinking about filling? Have you thought about who you're going to fill yet there? Uh, for sure, we are considering options since a couple of months. We may have to wait a little bit still to make the decision because we need to wait to some some other stuff going on to see how they shape up. But but that we think that whoever will come, we will be 
with the same soul of the team needs, needs to be a Latin guy, hopefully. And, and hopefully we won't miss something next year as we miss Vasco at the beginning. I love it. A Latin guy, fiery and, and passion. Well, congratulations, Guije. They're all saying from ashore, I'm sure, from Porto Cervo. Um, uh, well done to you guys, to the team. We might just try to grab a second here with Santi as well. Well, before you run away, Santi taking photos himself. But congratulations, Santi. Um, camera on that boat. Uh, it maybe took you a season to kind of remember how to sail the monohulls a little bit to, to play at the top of the level, but this year you guys have nailed it really, really well. How did it all come together for you? Well, I don't think it took me one year. Last year we had a, a bad start of the season and obviously there are some little tricks here and there that you get better. Uh, but I think as a team, I think this is a team sport and obviously to get used to the team and the, the team to get used to me also pay up some penalty last year and this year I think we, we sail a lot smoother with more trust on ourselves and more tranquilos and uh, and I think that pay off. I love it, more tranquilos. We we say how um, calm and collected they are uh, on board and, and I think uh, a true testament to just in general being calm even if we need the fiery Latino um, uh, to replace you but good luck next year in the Olympic sailing defending the gold everyone on shore uh, cheering you guys on well done and we will do one final uh, question with the owner here getting to um, race on board the team today how proud are you of how they've sailed this season I mean just nailing it with with such good consistency throughout the year and then taking the win with the race to spare yeah it's been absolutely magnificent as you said before I think I over heard we didn't win any one of the venues but the consistency pays off we made like four seconds this is really like the work of the team be consistent and well here's where we are well here's where you are and where you are is at the top of the leaderboard in the beautiful bay just off of Costa Esmeralda and you can see the smiles on board it was a phenomenal week of racing an excellent job to your team and um, that's it from us Andy thanks you guys Thank you very much indeed, uh, Jenny. Our congratulations to the entire uh, Azura team. Jenny, fantastic job over the course of the season. Always a pleasure and privilege to work with you. And uh, back with uh, James in the studio. Uh, what, a, what a season for the Azura team then. Four second places over the course of the year from five regattas. That tells a story. Yes, certainly. And as we've been saying, they are the kings of uh, consistency. And to, to really uh, keep that in the back of their minds, they weren't pushing. It didn't feel like they were obviously pushing super hard to get regatta wins, but to come out here and, uh, and take it in front of their home yacht club. Was I think the key thing taking from that with uh, Santi saying, really concentrating on not putting themselves in difficult positions, not pushing the risk too hard and obviously having some speed. James, your highlight for the season? Well, I've had to split it up into three highlights there, and it was just quite simply <laughs> too much. I, I had about half an hour to think of it, and uh, I went with a top three. Um, and it really, go back to the start of the season, we had a great opening couple of regattas, but uh, it was the rise and fall of Prevetsa, really. They looked super strong yeah. early on. Uh, and then, unfortunately, dropping their mast in the World Championships. It couldn't have happened at a worse time with not too many races left to really come back. Um, and then, of course, Kashkais. Um, we both remember Kashkais super well. Uh, for anybody watching, I highly recommend checking out the highlights of Kashkais. It was quite simply some of the, the best sailing uh, we've seen in the 52s. Great Abiela. place to go for holiday as well. Great surfing, great windsurfing. Yeah, I'm a surfer, so I was quite happy to see all that action. And Abiela quite right, rightly put it, uh, frighteningly fast. And she sailed around the world on uh, Brunel last time, uh, doing similar speeds in the Southern Ocean. So uh, that and would the third be the highlight. And the third one. Well, <laughs> it's again a split moment. Sled's total so dominance out here. bracket A. Exactly. <laughs> Sled's total dominance out here. Five. Uh, five wins in a row, yeah, you definitely. can't beat that. And of course, Azura winning in front of their home yard. What a win for Azura then, the uh, 2019 champions. Let's have a quick uh, final look at the uh, standings for the regatta and for the circuit. So this is how it ends up in 2019. Uh, Sled winning by, uh, what's that, uh, 19 points in the end. Sled 16, Azura 35, Quantum Racing 37, only two points behind. Uh, Platoon 42, Brunenasek 46, uh, one point behind Phoenix 11, finishing with that third. Uh, so uh, Phoenix 11 takes sixth, Provetsa seventh, uh, Allegra eighth, Gladiator ninth, and Team Vision Future tenth. 
and uh, at the end of Portogevo the final uh, standings are Azura 167 points, uh, 13 points to Platoon uh, on sec second place, uh, second for the third time in a row, Quantum Racing finishing up third, only two points uh, behind the Platoon though, very very close in the end, Brzenasek end up in fourth, uh, Prevetsa fifth, Sled in sixth, Allegra seventh and Phoenix 11 in eighth place. So uh, that's it from Porto Cervo. It's uh, only, I think, uh, five months until you'll join us again, hopefully in South Africa. Two regattas pretty much back to back. New venues uh, and a great uh, chance to go to South Africa. Join us next season. Thank you all very much for all your support through this season and what a season it's been finishing with the champions at Zura. Hit it! That's what I'm talking about. Wait! Okay now, from the beginning.
much. Have you, would you like to step into my office for a minute? Just to see, until you see how hot it is. You would. Would you like to step into my